Hi guys, it's uh, Chris James here, the creator of Web Catalyst. And in this section, we're going to talk about the first component of our website, which is the website blueprints. And the first part of the website blueprints is having, beginning with the end in mind. This is like one of the seven habits of highly effective people, right? But this is how to apply it specifically to what we're doing with building these agency grade websites for next to nothing. The number one thing missing from most small business websites and just business websites in general is these two things, calls to action and a most desired action. The reason you want to have a most desired action is because you need to know what your outcome is. Having a website just for the hell of it is not a good idea. And if you don't decide what the result is or what result you're looking for, you can't work backwards from that and build the website in order to achieve that outcome, right? So that's what a most desired action is. What are you, what's the number one thing you would like a website visitor to do, ideally? And then a call to action, maybe several variations of that. So let's look at calls to action. A call to action might be click here. It's like an instruction. It's it's getting people to take action. Click here, you know, add to cart. That's an instruction. Uh, sign up now. That's another instruction. You want people to do it. You're calling them to action. Contact us. That's a basic one. So always click here, really. But contact us. You're like telling someone to contact you. Request a callback. I'm not saying would you like to request a callback. It's request a callback. Get a free quote or book a free consultation. So you might have one, two, or all of those on your website in various places, calling people to action in all sorts of different ways. It's a good idea to have more than one call to action, at uh, especially with at different commitment levels, because callers or book a free consultation might be too big a leap for someone to take when they've just only just come across your website. So say you're um say you're a local plumbing firm or an electrical contractor or something like that. Um. Actually speaking to that company might be too much of a commitment for the person because they don't, they don't, they might not want to talk to someone and then and then them be get a salesperson on the phone and that person might push them into buying something. So until they feel comfortable with that, they might not want to get in touch. But something like you know sign up now if you had a newsletter or something like that, or click here for your plumber's buying guide or how to choose an electrical contractor um, special report or something like that. That's a, a call to action. Click here to download this special report on how to choose uh, the right plumber. That's low commitment because they can do that without being pushed into it. Other people might be ready to get in touch. So book a free consultation or get a free quote might actually be better for them. So depending on people's where they're at, the commitment level they're comfortable with at that particular point in time, give them a couple of options. So that's why having more than one call to action is a good idea. Now the most desired action is the one that you would most like them to take. And say, you know, getting a free quote ideally is what we want all the people to do. If if I were a local plumbing firm, I'd want everyone that came to my website to have a look around and then decide to request a free quote. I want everybody to do that. That's that'd be the purpose of my website. And that's kind of what the most desired action is. It's the main purpose for you having the website. It's to get people to request a free quote so I can get more jobs in. So let's look at a few examples of this, shall we? In the real world. That's all for this section guys. Thanks very much.